So this is the ZTE Axon 30 Ultra 5G, and quite frankly, I don't think I remember the last time I reviewed a ZTE phone. They were banned in the United States for a while, but apparently they're now allowed to be sold in the States going forward. No actual carrier is going to carry this device in the United States, but you will be able to buy it online. It's also coming to Canada. So if you're Canadian like me and you want to dive into some of these ZTE devices, you'll be able to get it up north as well. Now this is a big box, much bigger than let's say the iPhone box, which is now half the size due to the fact it no longer comes with the charger. You're presented with the phone and then inside the box, we have some paperwork. We have a case that's protected by plastic. That's super duper interesting. Your charging cable, which is USB type C and a dongle. So you can connect your old headphones into it. And finally, in the last box, you have your charging brick, which is a 66 watt adapter. So this does support fast charging, but it does not support wireless charging. Now, right off the bat, this feels a lot like the Note 20 Ultra. In fact, I'm gonna bring it into frame so you guys can see the differences between both of these devices. They look a lot alike. The big difference is that ZTE has its logo in the bottom right and Samsung has it in the middle. Now, the Note 20 Ultra has a bigger display which makes it longer and thicker to hold in the hand. This one's a bit smaller, it's easier to hold. Now, right off the bat, it does have those curved edges which make the phone look great, but quite frankly, I don't like curved displays. I would have rather them put a flat one. The other thing to note is that this front facing camera is 16 megapixels. And if you guys don't remember the ZTE 20 from like about a year ago, they tried incorporating a front facing camera that was under the display and it was God awful. So they ditched that this year, put a proper front facing camera and it should take a lot better photos. So I got the phone set up and this is what it looks like when you first log into your device. I'll be straight up with you. My OS, which is the theming that ZTE uses, is not the prettiest. It looks fairly dated, but it is clean and simple. Like when you scroll up to see what apps are installed, like this is it. There's not a lot of duplicative apps or junkware installed on this phone. They do need to clean a few things up. Like when you swipe down in the quick settings menu, this looks kind of junky. Like it just needs to be cleaner to look at. It actually reminds me of Asus's Zen UI from back in the day, but it's your typical Android smartphone. You swipe to the right, you get Google Now, everything is where it should be. The display. The 6.67 inch display is big enough. And even though it's 144 Hertz, it's not gonna burn through your battery because it's variable. So if you're just looking at the screen like this, it's probably running under 60 Hertz. You jump into the game or any game and it supports higher refresh rates, that display is gonna ramp up. Same if like you're scrolling through a web page. So it always feels fast and fluid when you want it to, but at the same time, it's not gonna burn through your battery if you're looking at static images. Now there's Face ID, but it's using one camera. There's no extra sensors. So I don't suggest using it if you want something secure, but it does have a fingerprint sensor. It's optical and it's super fast to log you in. You don't even need to push the power button. As long as you place your finger there, you're gonna get into your smartphone. The one thing I did notice though, is that the refinement of the edges and the actual body is not as nice as the Note 20 Ultra. And this is expected. Like this phone is rumored to cost anywhere from six to $700. So this places it right in line to the upcoming S21 FE, the OnePlus 9, and a few other smartphones like the iPhone. And this needs to be good, you know? Like I understand this has the, the Snapdragon 888, lots of storage, lots of RAM, micro SD card slot, but there's so much competition at this price point, like it just needs to be good. Now, one thing that ZTE is doing differently is the camera system. Like there's three 64 megapixel cameras and they're different types of lenses for different purposes, but you don't really see this too often on other smartphones. You have your standard lens, your wide lens, your ultra wide lens, all 64 megapixels. Then there is a fourth camera, which is your periscope. It's eight megapixels, but can only zoom up to five times. Now I took some photos comparing it to the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra. You guys let me know which one took the better pictures. Also, right now the software experience on the camera is not that great. It's very confusing and very messy right now, but ZTE did tell me that they're gonna be pushing an update towards the end of May to improve the camera experience. Look, this phone 
has everything you want on paper. The specs, the cameras, the display, everything. The battery life. The only thing it's truly missing is wireless charging. But there's a lot of competition at this price point. Like you're going up against the iPhone, you're going up against the, the OnePlus 9, the S21, the future S21 FE, and a bunch of other devices. So this needs to be perfect. And if you're considering this device, you also have to ask yourself, how long will ZTE support the smartphone? They're not a predominant player in North America. They're coming back, but you can't just walk into a TELUS or Rogers here in Canada or a Verizon and AT&T and pick this device up. So you have to ask yourself, do you think they're gonna support this device for years to come? Most likely, ZTE's pretty big, but how good and timely of a job will they do that compared to the more popular competition like from Samsung, OnePlus, or even the iPhone? You guys let me know in the comment section down below. Also, please let me know all your questions that you want me to answer in my full review and I'll do my best to answer as many of them. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you guys in the next video.